In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. This past Thursday, we celebrated the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord. And while the date of that feast shifts from year to year in accord with the shifting date of Easter, as every traditional Catholic knows, the Feast of the Ascension always, always falls on a Thursday. For it was after 40 days following the resurrection of the Lord, which took place on a Sunday, that our Lord then ascended into heaven, which necessarily falls on a Thursday. But on this Feast of the Ascension, we also had an important anniversary date, which is unchanging, in the life of the Church. The anniversary of the first apparition of Our Lady of Fatima to three young children. And in fact, we have an image of Our Lady of Fatima just here to my right. My friends, though the apparitions of Fatima were more than 100 years ago, the messages of Fatima are every bit as relevant as they were in 1917. And I want to focus on three messages or visions or secrets out of those apparitions given to those three children. The first regards individual souls, the second regards the world, and the third regards the church. The first vision and warning was with regards to the souls, the individual souls of the damned. The Blessed Mother provided a vision of those souls burning in hell, a vision of hell and the damned to the children, and it terrified them. It's described as terrible fires from which sparks were rising up and then falling back into that fire, I suppose something along the lines of a great bonfire, but much more terrifying. The Blessed Mother warned about the souls that are in danger of damnation most especially for sins against the flesh. And my friends, I tell you, the sins of the flesh are much more widespread and perverse than was the case in 1917. I mean, at that time, even the Protestants were still teaching against contraception. By the way, a recent statistic shows that here in the United States, we are at the lowest birth rate for the past 100 years, not to mention the terrible sexual perversions that are now enshrined in practice and in laws. Another vision, a secret, a prophecy given to the children of Fatima prophesied the Second World War. So related to the world and nations, the Blessed Mother warned that sin offends God and when it is widespread enough, God punishes it with war. And again, the world is much more deserving because of worldwide sin of a yet even worse war than was the case of the Second World War which cost more than 60 million lives. 
that generation from the United States that went to war in the Second World War, which would have included many of our parents, has often been described as the greatest generation for having survived the Depression and then having gone to war. If that was the greatest generation, what do we call the young generations now which are burning down our own cities at war with us rather than our enemies? It's not a question of whether there will be a war, but when and where. Will it be the Middle East with Israel and the Arabs? Will it be with Iran? Will it be farther east with China or with Rocket Man in North Korea? There are signs of a war looming. Finally, the Blessed Mother warned about the church with this mysterious figure in white and what he was suffering. And many of us believe that it was a prophecy of apostasy. There was already uh, a latent uh, emerging apostasy even in 1917 with modernism attempting inroads in the Catholic Church to subvert it from within. But it was only in its early stages, Pope Pius X and others did what they could to try and root it out and destroy it. But now, more than 100 years later, modernism has completely infiltrated the church and has risen to the top. And our Blessed Mother warned us about this terrible apostasy which would infect the church. Even now, nearly the whole of the Catholic Church in Germany is functionally in apostasy, but it is found everywhere and to the very top. Our friend Archbishop Vigano urged on the anniversary of the first apparition of Fatima that we would all commit to daily prayer of the rosary, most especially in this Marian month of May. And so in a moment, I'm going to ask you to join me in one decade of the rosary. And I urge you as well to pray it daily as individuals and as families. But I want to read the short statement of Archbishop Vigano, which in just a very few words captures the horrific crisis that we face now most especially with regards to globalism and apostasy. For over a year, the whole world has been held hostage by an elite that under the pretext of the pandemic intends to create the conditions for the Great Reset and the establishment of the new world order. This latest revolution, planned by the enemies of God and the human race, is certainly an infernal work, and as such it must be combated by recourse to the spiritual weapons of prayer, fasting, and penance. I exhort faithful Catholics to recite the Holy Rosary daily during this month dedicated to the Blessed Virgin, adding this supplication. May the Mediatrix of all graces, the Queen of Victories, assist us with her patronage in these moments of apostasy and grant us the virtue of fortitude to resist evil and obtain the conversion of sinners. Please join me now in one decade of the Rosary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou.